Hey guys, James here from eBay's Guitar, and in today's bass guitar lesson, I'm going to show you how to play the legendary Herbie Hancock tune, Cantaloupe Island. If you're a beginner to intermediate bass guitar player, make sure you check out this lesson all the way to the very end. Hey guys, it's James here from eBass Guitar, and in today's bass guitar lesson, we're going to be looking at the legendary Herbie Hancock tune, Cantaloupe Island. If you're looking to get into playing jazz, or you're looking to go and play at a jazz jam session, this is a tune which you're more than likely guaranteed to see. This is also the second part in a series where we looked at another tune by Herbie Hancock called Watermelon Man. Make sure you go back and check that out, because many of the ideas covered in that lesson are directly applicable to Cantaloupe Island. Cantaloupe Island is one of those tunes where the worlds of jazz and rock meet. So it's a great entry into the world of jazz, particularly if you played styles of music like blues, rock or country or soul before, because there's loads of areas where you can start experimenting and improvising. So let's crack on with the lesson and show you what we're one, going to cover two, today. Three. <laughs> Just before we hit the lesson content, I want you to know that there's a completely free PDF which comes with this lesson where you can see everything we're discussing today written out in standard notation and tab. You can grab your copy by clicking the link in the description below. Also, if you want to get the backing track that we're using in today's lesson, this is part of an album that I put together called the Jazz Jam Backing Track Album Volume 1. There are these set set of tunes which you will see on jam sessions, whether you're jamming in New York, London or Tokyo. There are these set tunes which you will see time and time again. So I put an album of world-class versions of these tunes designed especially for bass players together. You can check out the album and grab your copy over at eBay's Guitar. Just click on the products menu and you'll see it there. The first thing I'm going to show you today is how to play the legendary riff which runs through the whole of this tune. Then I'm going to show you how to apply it to the 16 bar Cantaloupe Island chord sequence. So this one bar riff is based on what I call the four power notes because these are four notes which work really really well over many many chord sequences and are great to start improvising on. And the four power notes are the root, the fifth, flattened seventh and the octave. So Cantaloupe Island is in the key of F minor, so those notes are going to be F, C, E flat and F like that. And you can use these combinations of notes in many, many situations, particularly if you're in rock bands or funk bands, they're a great place to start improvising. So let me play you this one bar riff to begin with and we'll work on that. So it's one, two, three, bar. So the first note is placed on beat one, and then the critical thing for the groove is this next note, which is based on beat two and, so it's one, two, and three, four. So it's pushed just before the third beat, which is really, really important, which gives this whole of this piece its vibe. And then the last two notes are placed on beats four and four and, so it's one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. It's worth 
mentioning at this point that the piano player's left hand often doubles this as well. So it's worth being aware that someone else could be in your frequency range too, and it's good to get it tight with the piano player's left hand. So let's put this over the 16 bar Cantaloupe Island chord sequence. And this is a fascinating and very unusual chord sequence. It starts off with four bars of F minor, like this. Then we go to this chord, D flat seven, and this is completely unrelated diet with to diatonic harmony, so it's so unusual, but works brilliantly. Then we go to D flat for four bars. Basically, the same power note shape works directly over it. So the notes are D flat, A flat, and then a C flat like that, and a D flat. So just use exactly the same shape. It's worth mentioning that you've gone for an F minor chord here to a D flat seven. So if you wanted to put the third in your bass lines, make sure you play a major third like that to make sure the chord has a seventh quality to it. But just to begin with, the four power notes or the box shape will work perfectly. Then to finish or just to nearly finish the sequence off, we go to four bars of D minor, but it goes to this more spacey feel. And what we do is we do this, one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four. So the groove remains the same of beat one and beat two and, but we really just miss out on the last notes of the bar and it cr creates this much more sparse effect. But the other thing that happens is we often play a chord here. So we play the root and the fifth like that. So, so that is a D and an A like that. So play those two notes together. Sometimes the A is written down like that, but I don't particularly like that sound. It's too muddy on the bass for my taste. So I always play it as a little power chord like this. So one, two, and three, four. 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 Then to finish off the sequence, we go back to four bars of F minor using the same riff again. Now it's really important to get those last four bars in because it kind of resets the sequence. And I've seen it time and time again on jam sessions that musicians often miss those, se that, those last four bars out and make it a 12 bar and everything starts to get a little bit out of place. So make sure you always count out those last four bars to begin with. So let's hear what this sounds like in context. Two, three. <laughs> So it's worth mentioning that there's a four bar introduction on the demonstration that I just played. This is typical when playing this tune. Just listen for where the melody comes in on the guitar and that's where the 16 bar sequence begins. So let's look at some ideas now, how we could start improvising and developing that bass line because Cantaloupe Island is a ton of fun and there is so much space to get creative and start improvising. So an idea that I love to teach my students is what I call the eight seven five fill, which you can place at the end of every bar. So what it sounds like is this. So it's one, two, three, bar. <laughs> And 
basically the groove, the first two notes remain the same. So it's one, two, and three, four, like that. Then we place these four notes, or three notes rather, from the four power notes on the last three eighth notes of the bar. So it's going to be the eighth or the octave, the flattened seventh, and the fifth. And these notes are placed on beats three and, beats four, and beats four and. So let me just slow this right down for you. One, two, and three, and four, and 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 one. So just take it apart very slowly and mathematically and you'll be able to place all of those notes. Now the great thing with the 875 fill is you can rearrange all those notes as you like. So you could do uh, five, seven, eight. So one, two, and three. Or you could play two notes. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and and just you can have lots and lots of fun. Go through all of the different combinations you can find. This is a great place to start improvising simply on this chord sequence. So it's worth mentioning that there's typically a four bar introduction found on the front of Cantaloupe Island. And you would have heard that in the demonstration that I just played there. So what you want to listen to is where the guitar melody comes in. And that is where the 16 bar sequence starts and starts cycling round. Now let's talk about how to start improvising and having some fun on this tune. There are loads and loads of possibilities to get creative over this particular chord sequence. So what I want to show you is a concept that I call the 875 fill. And the 875 fill is a fill which uses the octave, the flattened seventh and the fifth. And I'm going to show you how it works. And what we do is we leave the first two notes of the groove absolutely identical. So one, two and three, four, like that. Then we place this 875 fill on beats three and, beats four and, beats four and. So it sounds like this in context. One, two, three, four. One, two and three and four and one, two and three and four and one. Let's slow it right down. One, two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. And the great thing is those are the same notes that you've already covered in the riff from Cantaloupe Island. So they should just fall brilliantly under your hands and then you can just move it into all of the other chords. So into D flat. So one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one. And then over the D minor, you could play the chord. So it's one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one. Now the great thing is you can rearrange those notes. So you could go five, seven, eight, like that. Or you could play two notes. You could go seven, seven, eight. You could, or you could go a fifth octave, flat and seventh, like that. There are so many options there where you can start experimenting with this very, very simple framework of the eight, seven, five fill. So what I want to do is show you what this looks like or sounds like in context. Don't forget, this is all written out in the completely free PDF, which comes One, with this two, lesson. Three.
Guys, if you're enjoying this lesson, make sure you jump over to ebassguitar.com and check out the Bass Lab Plus. The Bass Lab Plus is a full program designed especially for the beginner to intermediate bass player. If you're interested in learning how to play jazz and start playing in a jazz jam session, we have courses in there specifically designed to help you with that, but also build up all of the skills you need to play at home and rock out, to play in the worship team, to join your first band, or simply play at jam sessions. So if you want to start leveling up your bass playing and discover all of the skills that you need to know to play rock solid bass, make sure you check out the Bass Lab Plus. You can join free today with a 14-day trial. There is a link in the description below. So to finish off this lesson, I want to show you one specific idea that I use over the D minor section where it starts to get a little bit more spacey and there's a bit more kind of musical room to start improvising. But first of all, make sure you jump back and check out the Water Melon Man lesson as well. You'll see a bunch more ideas there of how you can use the four power notes and the bass lines that you discovered in Water Melon Man more often than not will work directly over Cantaloupe Island and vice versa. So let's talk about this D minor section. What often happens is rather than playing this every bar like this, what players tend to do is play it once and then hold on for two bars, like or one bar rather. One, two, and three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, three, four. That second bar where I'm holding over is a great place to start putting a fill in there. And the perfect scale to put a fill in there is the D minor pentatonic. So let me just play you an idea first of all so you can hear what I mean, then we'll take it apart. So it's one, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. So what I'm going to do now is show you four ideas which use the D minor pentatonic. So the D minor pentatonic is the first finger on D and then the flat third under your fourth finger which is an F and then the fourth which is under the first finger like that which is the G and then the A over the third finger like that and then the C and then the D like that. So root, flat and third, fourth, fifth, flat and seventh an octave or D, F, G, A, C, D. So first of all, practice that up and down to begin with. So for all four of the examples coming up, I'm gonna use the same rhythm, which is six eighth notes and then a quarter note on the end, which sounds like this, one and two and three and four. So the fourth beat is just that kind of little bit longer, which will give you time to get back to the D minor chord there. So the first riff or fill we're going to play is this. And then we're gonna go straight up the scale. So one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. So they're the six, six notes rhythmically. And then we're gonna land back again on the C like this. So root, flat and third, fourth, fifth, flat and seventh, octave, and then back there. One and two and three and four. So put this in context, it sounds like this. One and two and three and four. version of that fill is literally starting at the top of the pentatonic and coming back. So it sounds like this. So to take that fill apart, we start on the D up here. D, C, A, G, F, D, F, and we now land slightly longer on that last F, like that. So practice both of those fills in isolation. Now let's go on to fill number three. We're going to get a little bit more inventive, but just use the same rhythmic structure again. So we're going to... So this starts off with two Ds, C and A, and then G, A, C. So 
forget, this is all written out in the completely free PDF which comes with this lesson. So put this in context up to tempo. <laughs> one what we're going to do is use little subtle groupings of three so it sounds like this and this is a prime example of something that I would actually play so let's take this apart three notes at a time so it's going to start off with D C A so that's your first grouping of three. Then the second grouping of three is going to be C, A, G. And try and accent each grouping of three. And then we're going to land on the fourth beat on the F like this. Just some ideas to get you going and to start improvising. Obviously, you could transpose all of these fills or little riff ideas across into the other chords, into F or D flat. They will all fall under your fingers too. So these are just some ideas to get you going. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate these fills in context now with a backing track. Then I'm going to break out a little bit to show you some of the ideas that I would typically play over this Two, tune. Three. So 
guys, that's the end of today's bass guitar lesson. If you've enjoyed this lesson, make sure you download the completely free PDF which comes with this lesson where you can see everything we've discussed today written out in standard notation and tab. There's a link in the description below. Also, if you're looking to push your bass guitar playing forward and you're looking for a step-by-step -step program designed especially for the beginner to intermediate bass guitar player, make sure you check out the Bass Lab Plus over at ebassguitar.com. There's a link in the description below where you can join free with a 14-day trial. Cheers, I've been James from eBassGuitar and I'll catch you next time.